Hello and welcome to the Jordan Experience Podcast. My name is Troy Jordan. Um, I got a lot of feedback on my introductory episode, which really wasn't a first episode. Like, it's not gonna, it wasn't episode one. Technically, this is. But the, the feedback that I got was um, mostly helpful. Um, I heard a lot of the the main criticism that I had was there wasn't enough like structure and I was kind of going around in circles um, fair enough um, I think that well I, I got some uh, good advice from uh, Mrs. Gadio great teacher but in between one of her verbal uh, barrages, her verbal attacks upon me, she gave me some pretty good advice that I should, going forward, I should structure my my episodes to where I'm, I'm talking about two to three main points. And so instead of being like, because I don't want this to be like, I only talk about movies or I'm only talking about video games or whatever. So I have a couple points. And if I have a guest, it'll be an interview. Um, but I just wanted to kind of establish the structure a little bit more because I don't want people thinking that it's going to be as unstructured as it was in the introductory introductory episode. So, that being said, the first thing I would, well, first things I would like to talk about is a couple of movies that I got around to re-watching. Um... Starting off, Return to Oz. It's like this Wizard of Oz, like, reboot, remake. I don't even really know what to call it. It came out in 85, directed by a guy named Walter Murch. Merck. He had work on The Godfather 1 and 2, um, THX 1138, and Apocalypse Now, which are all, like hit movies. So you would think that this is going to be a good movie, right? So it's just, without spoiling the entire plot of the movie, it's just freaky. It's trippy, and it's just the whole, it's a roller coaster. Like, Instead of Dorothy being in, like, a tornado and getting sent to, um, the land of Oz, she's like this little girl who gets sent to a sanitarium because she's having delusions that she's in Oz. Okay, so she gets sent to a sanitarium for electroshock therapy and escapes. And so when she escapes, she's like she is going back into the delusions and have the, has this has these like visions. But the weird part of the movie is they, and when she when she gets to Oz, it's not you know friendly like lion scarecrow sort of thing. The 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 city, Emerald City and the Yellow Brick Road, are in ruins, and like some evil empire has basically taken over. And the villains are just f- freaky. Like, instead of flying monkeys, there's this, like, group of people called the Wheelers, where their hands and legs are wheels. Just g- Google a picture of, just just Google Return to Oz Wheelers. It's frightening. And they wear these, like, masks on their foreheads. So when they're, like, moving forward on their wheels, they, their head is down, so you just see the mask. Like, their face is facing the floor. So you're just seeing the mask. Um, and the way they interact with Dorothy, like, in the, when she's, like, getting chased by them, it's just, it comes off as, like, I don't know, predatory? Like, it's just, ugh. It, they just make my skin crawl. And so, instead of the Wicked Witch, there's like this, I mean, she's still a witch, her name's Mombi, and she has this, like, collection of heads in her castle that she, like, took over, or her tower, I guess. 
she has this collection of heads in this cabinet that she unscrews and can like replace her head and switch her personality, like her whole being, which who comes up with that? I want to know what this dude, this Walter Merck, what was he on? Because you're talking about a guy who was working on The Godfather 1 and 2, which are probably in everyone's top 10 movies of all time. Apocalypse Now, which is another great movie about the Vietnam War, and then THX 1138, a dystopian like sci-fi film, which was also pretty good, in my opinion. So, this the witch, Mombi, when Dorothy gets to her tower, she like locks her up in this tower, and the they uh, they get locked in this tower, but they 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 craft this like flying couch. I kid you not. It's I I want to say it's a couch or maybe it's a bed. One of the two. She they craft this this flying couch, and to make it like be alive, they put like an elk head, like how people put like deer heads on the walls and stuff. It's an elk's head on the front of this couch or bed, and they put like giant leaves to like make it fly and they like fly out of the tower what is that i mean again who thinks of this and so the the main the leader of like the evil empire that's took that's taken over oz is this he's called the gnome king spelt n-o-m-e I'm like okay so he's this he's your stereotypical like tyrant of this evil empire but he gets his power through like dorothy's ruby slippers and so he's like standing on there's a scene where he's standing on his like throne and he like moves his like cloak or his cape or whatever and he's got these like red heel slippers on okay um it's on disney plus by the way it's on disney plus and i really encourage you to watch this movie like i'm not gonna say it's not a good movie but it's just when you google it 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 comes up as it says like dark fantasy but it's rated pg this is not a pg movie like well i mean it's there's nothing like disgusting or whatever that happens in it but it's just that weird um, without spoiling the entire plot of the movie, I think I'll end there. I mean, I, I already kind of, like, spoiled some things that happened, but you know what? It's okay. Um, I, just watch it. Please. Please watch it. So there's another movie that I want to kind of go over that's not as weird, but still pretty freaky. It also came out in 1985, and it's called The Adventures of Mark Twain. It's like this claymation film, and basically, Mark Twain, like the author, is the main character, and his like famous characters, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, and Becky Thatcher, I don't know who that is are like all, like, they're the characters. So Mark Twain is, like, flying this ship towards, like, a comet. So they're flying on this spaceship and... towards this comet, and... basically, Mark Twain is, like, the reason he's flying the spaceship is because he wants to, like meet up with the comet, I mean, to, like, you know, uh, end his life on that note, so, but the, the, the biggest thing, uh, this this is just me kind of talking about the movie, but the biggest, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about is this specific scene where they, like, they're, they come across this character, he's, he's known as the Mysterious Stranger, and when the characters ask who he is, he's like, he's the dark side, I guess. 
This is what it's known as. He's the dark side of Mark Twain, and he's known as the mysterious stranger. And when they ask him what his name is, he, he goes, Satan. Like, his name is Satan. So, yeah. But there, it, it's a really creepy scene, and I, I will see if I can't link it down in the description, so make sure to look at it because it's freaky. So, enough about the freak show movies, and on to uh, a news story that I saw recently. Apparently, the federal government is funding what they're calling safe smoking kits uh, that they're going to distribute for the consumption of illicit drugs. And I can link an uh, article or two um, that kind of show more details and information about that. But the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Agency allocated $30 million for a harm reduction program, which includes syringe exchanges, the opioid reversal drug naloxone, and safe smoking supplies. So it's federally taxpayer funded, which has got, it's garnered a lot of scrutiny because of that, because people are saying they don't want to be paying for paraphernalia, basically. And Another big argument is that the number one cause of death for adults 18 to 45, this is according to the CDC, is fentanyl overdoses, which is a man-made, like, I don't know, I'm not an expert on it. It's a, it's a, I think it's a man-made drug, right? So it's a lot more effective, a lot more addictive. Um, and it's being laced in heroin and, and crack and stuff. So the, the other argument to this is that it's cheaper. It's cheaper to just, you know, give people supplies and go, here's your, you know, paraphernalia. It's cheaper because the, it, then it's cheaper than continuing the war on drugs, which is a, an objective failure and continues to be an objective, objective failure. But over 100,000 people from April 2020 to April 2021 overdosed and 64% was on fentanyl so it it gains a lot of worry um, because I don't want people don't want taxpayer money to uh, contribute to deaths and maybe maybe not um, just an interesting news story that that's I think it's relatively new it'll 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 gain a bunch of attention here soon, but um, I don't know, just strange times we live in where taxpayer money is going towards drug paraphernalia. And it's I don't think it's a new thing either. I've been doing a little bit of research on it because I thought it was fake at first, but I, I, apparently it's real and I think things like this have happened before. So it's not some new concept, but I don't know, it, it seems... I think it might be dangerous and it could possibly do more harm than good to people. Like, you don't want to, I mean, they're not giving out drugs, but you're, I think you're almost encouraging drug use. But I think, um, before I go too deep on that, um, I'm just kind of spreading the news. I don't really want to have like a turn into some opinionated show so I think I'll leave it at that but those were that's really what I get wanted what I wanted to get through um, like I said in the beginning I wanted to can moving forward structure episodes sort of like this where I just go through a handful of interesting things maybe it's a story maybe it's something I saw maybe it's you know whatever but like I said guests coming on soon um, there may or may we're having a bit of, of slow production here with the podcast and GNN because I've been trying to sort a lot of things out, but we should we should hopefully start to get on a schedule soon. 
Um, it looks good going forward, but next week, um, well, I don't know when this is going to come out, but um, the week of Valentine's Day, so Monday the 14th, that week might be, might may or may not have a, um, it depends on when this one comes out, but it may not have an episode because a lot of the GNN folks are going down to um, Disney World. So I'm turning my attention towards, I mean, because a majority of the classroom is gone, so I'm turning my attention towards helping them. And I think I'm going to be wor working on having a big role in an episode for GNN, so be on the lookout for that. But just kind of going over some things. Um, but I think that's where I'll leave it off for this episode, the very first episode, by the way. So I listened to the criticism listen to the advice and hopefully this turned out a little bit more structured than the first episode so thank you for watching and have a wonderful day